all right let's look at this question it's all about methodologies and techniques so just like my previous practice test always mark the keyword in the question because it will help you arrive at the correct answer easily and will save your time we'll look at option a a says managing incidents and resolving unplanned disruptions so this practice focuses on handling and resolving unexpected incidents not on enhancing project management techniques it's incorrect let's move to option b b says enhancing processes through ongoing adjustments and refinements this focuses on the practice of continuously refining process methodologies and competencies to enhance project management and overall organizational efficiency so let's park this we'll move to option c c says handling request for it services or information this practice is about fulfilling it service request not related to developing project management methodologies therefore incorrect let's move to option d d says enabling and managing changes within the it environment while it involves managing changes within it it does not focus on the development of methodologies or techniques for project management we'll eliminate this we'll lock option b as the right answer all righty so let's look at this question it's all about tracks improvement ideas let's look at option a a says helps plan changes communicate effectively avoid conflicts and allocate resource appropriately so this option describes a tool for change management and resource allocation but it doesn't specifically focus on managing improvement ideas and tracking their progress therefore incorrect let's move to option b b says aids in choosing the appropriate method model or technique for identifying improvements this option focuses on selecting improvement methods but not on tracking and managing improvement ideas let's eliminate this we'll move to option c c says used to track and manage improvement ideas from their identification through to their final action so this option accurately describes the function of a continual improvement register that is also known as cir which is used to track and manage improvement ideas throughout their life cycle from identification to final so let's park this we'll move to option d this is provides a formal description of one or more services designed to meet the needs of a specific group of consumers this option describes service management tools used in it services but not a tool for tracking improvements let's reject this we'll lock option c as the right answer all right now so let's look at this question it's all about changing authorization we'll look at option a a says a change authority is always assigned whenever a standard change is requested standard changes are typically pre-authorized and don't require additional approval each time they are requested so the statement is inaccurate hence incorrect let's move to option b b says the technician who performs an emergency change is authorized to approve that change in many cases emergency changes may be approved by a designated change authority not the technician performing the change so wrong answer we'll move to option c c says the type of change and the model used are the primary factors in deciding who has the authority to approve the change this option correctly emphasizes that the type and model of the change play a key role in determining the appropriate authority for approval we'll park this let's move to option d and this is the change authority is responsible for ensuring that changes are approved only after they have been implemented typically changes must be authorized before they are implemented post implementation authorization is generally not the standard practice so we'll reject this option we'll lock option c as the right answer all right now so let's look at this question uh, it's question about reflecting the purpose of improved value chain activity we'll look at option a a says ensure continuous enhancement of practices across all stages of the value chain so this is the essence of continuous improvement ensuring that practices 
evolve for better efficiency, quality and alignment with organizational objectives. We'll park this. Let's move to option B. B says ensure that services consistently align with the expectations for quality, cost and delivery timelines. While this is important, it focuses more on the outcome of the services rather than on continuous improvement process itself. Incorrect choice. Let's move to option C. C says ensure that there, there is a common understanding of the improvement objectives for services throughout the organization. This refers more to communication and alignment within the organization, which is important but does not capture the essence of the improved value chain activity, which is about practical improvements to services. So we'll eliminate this. Let's move to option D. D says ensure active and positive relationship with all stakeholders are maintained throughout the project. This is about stakeholder management which is important but falls under other value chain activities such as engage or deliver will reject this will lock option a as the right answer all right all right so let's look at this question it's all about minimizing redundant or unnecessary task we'll look at option a ac is prioritize simplicity and real world applicability this principle focus on simplicity and practicality in all processes aligns with the concept of eliminating unnecessary work in project management will park this let's move to option b b says embrace a comprehensive and integrated approach this principle is more about seeing the bigger picture and not necessarily focusing on eliminating unnecessary work hence incorrect let's move to option c c says begin with your current resource and capabilities this principle supports making incremental improvements from the existing state but does not directly address reducing an unnecessary task. So let's eliminate this. Let's move to option D. D says implement gradual progress with continuous feedback. This focuses on iterative work with feedback which is essential for progress but does not specifically address eliminating un unnecessary work. We'll reject this. We'll lock option E as the right answer. Okay. Okay, so let's look at this question. It's all about ITIL guiding principle of focus on value. Let's look at option A. A says learn the reasons behind the service consumers uses of services. The principle of focus on value directly aligns with understanding why services are used by service consumers. We'll park this. Let's move to option B. B says comprehend the big picture but proceed with actions anyway while understanding the system as a whole is important simply acting without focusing on value could lead to unnecessary work or misaligned outcomes so incorrect choice let's move to option c c says recognize and address the intricacies of the system this principle is important but does not directly connect to focusing on value so wrong answer let's move to option d this is focus on reducing the number of tasks while improving the quality. This principle is relevant to efficiency and quality, but it is not specifically aligned with the ITIL guiding principle of focusing on value to the consumers what's required by the question. Therefore, option D is out. We'll lock option A as the right answer. All right now, so let's look at this question. It's all about mitigating risk. We'll look at option A, A says by offering services that meet well-stabilized needs. While this is important, this option doesn't address the role of service consumers in managing risk or mitigating risk. Therefore, incorrect choice. Let's move to option B. B says by confirming that the service provider's resources are appropriately configured. This places the responsibility on the service consumer to ensure the provider's configuration which is not typically within the consumer's role. We'll eliminate this. Let's move to option C. C says by being fully knowledgeable about their specific service expectation, the key to risk mitigation is clear communication of service consumer's needs and expectation. We'll park this. Let's move to option D. D says by managing risk on the service provider's behalf. This would be an overextension of 
consumer's role, therefore we'll reject this. We'll lock option C as the right answer. Okay, so now let's look at this question. It's all about IT service desk. We'll look at option A first. A says addressing unplanned disruptions or problems in the service. Incident management focuses on resolving unexpected issues or disruptions, but the request for a report is not a specific disruption. Hence incorrect. Let's move to option B. B says overseeing that the service provider meets the agreed upon service levels. While important, service level management ensures that agreed service levels are met across all services. We'll eliminate this. Let's move to option C. C says managing request for routine services or support. The user request to generate a report is a standard service request rather than an incident or change. We'll park this. Let's move to option D. D says facilitating and authorizing changes to services or infrastructure. Change enablement deals with managing and approving changes to systems or services. But generating a report does not require a change to infrastructure. We'll eliminate this. We'll lock option C as the right answer for this. All right now. So let's look at this question. It's all about users having multiple access points to report problems. So let's look at option A. It says customer support desk. The customer support portal provides multiple access points for users to report issues ensuring a range of channels are available for reporting problems we'll park this let's move to option b b says service commitment management service agreement monitoring focuses on tracking compliance with service level agreements that is sla and does not ensure a variety of access channels for reporting issues so wrong answer let's move to option c c says problem and incident handling the problem resolution process is about managing and resolving problems once identified but does not guarantee that multiple channels are provided for users to report issues initially. Let's eliminate this. We'll move to option D. D says change management assistance. Change management ensures that changes to the project are implemented efficiently but it doesn't directly relate to providing multiple access points for users to report issues we'll reject this we'll lock option a as the right answer let's bring the heat to the snow we'll look at this question this is about classification and processed as service request during the project as opposed to other types of incident or change request let's look at option a it says handling an interruption in ongoing service this is an incident and not a service request incidents require investigation and resolution typically outside the scope of regular service request hence incorrect let's move to option b b says applying an urgent patch to address a security vulnerability this is a change request again that involves applying an urgent fix or patch which is typically part of a formal change management process wrong answer We'll look at option C. C says implementing a temporary solution to bypass an issue. This is a workaround, not a service request. It's a temporary fix for an issue rather than an ordinary service request. So we'll eliminate this. We'll look at option D. D says allocating a virtual server for a development team to use. In this case, providing a virtual server is a typically service request for a team to perform their work in a project. So this looks good and it is the correct answer. So please, please, please don't go away. If you want to check our technical certifications and courses, you can navigate to our Udemy channel where we have a tons of courses out there where as a project manager, it will help you to bridge your gaps between your technical team and as a project manager or IT, uh, ITIL person, it will help you to take your project to next level. So thank you so much for watching our video.